A voltage is applied to two electrodes immersed in an electrolytic solution of heavy water and lithium salts. This establishes a flow of current from a strip of palladium, acting as the cathode, to several platinum coils, acting as the anode. Temperature sensors measure the temperature of the electrolyte solution within the cell, as well as the cooling water that surrounds it in the larger jacket container. Within the solution, many of the D2O heavy water molecules are dissociated into OD negative and D positive ions. When the voltage is applied to the electrodes, the OD negative ions are attracted to the positively charged platinum anodes, where they lose an electron and combine with other OD ions to reform back into D2O, while the remaining orphaned oxygen atoms combine to form O2, which escapes as a gas up to the surface of the solution. Meanwhile, the D positive ions are attracted to the negatively charged palladium cathode, where they quickly find an electron on the surface of the cathode to neutralize their charge. This cathode is made of palladium atoms, arranged in a face-centered cubic lattice. Some deuterium atoms work their way into the lattice by popping through the interatomic sites within the lattice. Other deuterium atoms bump into each other along the surface of the palladium cathode and form a D2 molecule that's too big to enter the lattice. These D2 molecules cluster to form bubbles that rise up in the electrolyte solution. Simultaneously, new D2O molecules are dissociated in the electrolyte into more OD negative and D positive ions. So the process continues as long as the voltage is applied. However, when the super wave principle is used to vary the current with a pattern of rising and falling nested oscillations, the loading of deuterium atoms within the palladium lattice is enhanced and so is the fluxing of deuterium atoms in and out of the cathode. As the concentration of deuterium in the lattice across the cathode surface increases, the deuterium starts to work its way deeper into the lattice, popping into neighboring interatomic sites. As the deuterium occupies more of these interior sites, the lattice dimensions increases a little. This lattice expansion causes mechanical stresses in the cathode that impose resistance to deuterium diffusion, thus requiring higher currents to force more deuterium atoms into the lattice until it reaches saturation. When the concentration of deuterium within the lattice is high, they begin to move more collectively, like a school of fish or flock of birds, not all at once, but increasingly synchronized over time. At this point, pairs of deuterium atoms begin to disappear, fusing together to form an atom of helium-4 isotope. A significant amount of heat is released in this fusion process. The energy released by each helium atom that appears, 24 million electron volts, is dissipated by the lattice as heat, raising the temperature of the palladium electrode and the surrounding electrolytic solution. The amount of energy being generated by this fusion reaction is five million times greater than if those same two deuterium atoms were chemically combined to form a single D2 deuterium molecule, and 10 million times larger than the oxidation reaction to create a D2O heavy water molecule. It is this excess heat that is causing such excitement within the scientific community.